9.43 a.m. March 3rd, Super Tuesday, and the adventure begins. Oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into? Oops, sorry, obviously not the shower yet this morning. Everybody, Rob Appel, making it fun, Michael Miller Fabrics, and we are on an adventure that just started three minutes ago that I didn't realize was happening today. That's right, tomorrow I'm on my way up to Roseville, California. I am teaching in a workshop and doing a presentation. Look at this, I'm still even printing out the handouts right now, so I can't quite leave on the road. I need to go vote. I need to finish my coffee. But Mel Beach, one of our wonderful brand ambassadors, lives up in San Jose. And when I calculated, I realized, ooh, for just a couple of hours extra on the road, I can run over to her house. Now, when she posted block number two for Peek into the Batik, or Peek into Batik, our wonderful block of the month so long we're doing with our Michael Miller Batiks, she was using the Accu quilt system. And I don't have one of those, and I really think I would like to have one of those. And so I want to go and play with hers. And so I called her and I said, hey Mel, even though I don't know you at all, we work together so can I come over and play in your studio? And she said, yes, I can. And so anyways, why don't we all go to Mel's studio right now? 341, <laughs> boom, there she is, Mel Beach, everybody. Hello. We did it, that was a quick trip, <laughs> even though I had a couple of delays. I said, come on in, so I'm excited. <laughs> uh, this is fantastic. Hey, before we start in on our tutorial today, um, can I have a quick, a get to know Mel moment. Uh, sure. Tell me about yourself, please. Uh, my name is Mel Beach. I've been quilting since 2003, teaching for the past four or five years. Uh, this is my second year as a Michael Miller brand ambassador, so I'm really excited to be partnering with them. And I just love their fabrics, and it's been a fun journey the past year and going into the next year of uh, making new projects using some of their basic collections and some of their new upcoming collections, which is always fun. So, yeah. Hey, talk about hardware. Uh, what do you got What do you got sewing in here? Well, I have my Juki uh, oh. TL2010. Uh, it's a real workhorse. I love it. I've had it for almost two and a half years. Is this a straight stitch only? It is. Oh, and yeah. it's just fast, powerful, uh, not too many bells and whistles, which I like personally. Most of what I'm doing is piecing and quilting. Right. And I just love this machine. I take it pretty much everywhere I go for workshops and other things. So um, it's my favorite for sure. Beautiful light. There's outside. <laughs> Wonderful. You've got your computers and your printers and everything I'm dialed in. Space. Yes, yes. You've got a long arm. We were just I talking know. about how uh, long arms change our work environment. <laughs> This is uh, my new gamble. I got it right before the holidays, and so right. I'm still learning it. I'm definitely more comfortable still on the sit-down uh, domestic machine. Me as well. Um, but I'm getting there. So I've been loading up some quilts and doing some charity quilts for my guild. And that's been great practice and kind of getting the flow of things. And actually, I did my most recent Micah Miller project on here. So right. I, I'm getting braver and, and having fun with it. So. so meaning you finally committed a true quilt top to you it. You got it. Yes, <laughs> yes. I got, I got kind of in a short time zone situation and and i did that i basically didn't have time to finish my project on a domestic so i threw it on the long arm and i just had to get it yeah. done make it work sometimes that's just the <laughs> best way to learn you trial by it. fire right yep super organized i'm loving the palette the colors all of the drawers all of the design space all of the library of books and shelving and uh concrete tubes is that what those are rad Hey, Mike's getting tubed. <laughs> That's so cool. There used to be an avalanche of quilts up there. If I needed one, they'd all come tumbling down. So this way right. I can kind of organize them by workshop. So yeah, no, I find having an organized space really helps me be efficient. I can get things done pretty fast turnaround because I know mm -hmm. where most of my tools and fabrics mm -hmm. are. So. I'm going into the sewing chair <laughs> for the rollback view. Yeah. Look at this. She does. She's got everything right there at her disposal partner built this for us we designed it so it's kind of pegboard which is nice so i can organize all my tools and then if i want to kind of close up the clutter mm -hmm. just slide the doors back and you know it's a little bit more presentable and and it's more space because that will slide with tools on it right so oh, yeah. technically you could peg it up oh yeah i could put stuff outside of here for sure hey is that a block number two over there on the uh, design wall you got it block number one and block number two 
all ready to go. They were fun to make and went together really easy peasy. Um, I, I used the app quilt cutting system and it was really very easy and fast. So yeah, I'm excited to do hopefully all 12 at some point. So you mentioned AccuQuilt. It's, it's funny that you mentioned AccuQuilt. <laughs> um, I mentioned AccuQuilt at the beginning of the video before you got here to your house, actually before I got here to your house. <laughs> And so I don't have AccuQuilt at my house. Uh. And I was coming through the neighborhood and I thought, you know, I've got some, some pieces <laughs> to make. Maybe we could use your AccuQuilt to make my next block. Yeah. Okay, so block number one here, mm -hmm. that was made on the AccuQuilt. Correct. And block number two also was on made on the AccuQuilt. Yes. Okay, we're making a live home video. <laughs> so here I'm coming over here. Where's my block number one? Would you please put that above one of your blocks? I'm concerned that it's not even going to, is it going to work? Oh, I think it is. Okay, so that was my first concern oh, yeah. is will we be the same size? Yeah. Yes. Tell Here me about it, it is. So the, um, this is the AccuCut Quilt Go. It's an amazing fabric cutting system. And um, if you get the ultimate system, it also comes with this mix and match 8 inch cube block, which is pretty wild because it's got all these different dies contained within here that can all be mixed and matched to make a lot of different blocks. So it's like your own quilt factory. So it cuts all the different pieces to make all the different yeah. quilt designs and styles. And and they include, you can see like there's a little pattern in here that shows you what number units you need. And you can make all these traditional blocks that are very well known and recognized. Um, and it makes it really super easy. So there's eight different dies included. Okay. Hey, talk to the non-quilter. What is a die? Great. So a die is a, a special tool that it uses with the system. And you'll see in here, it's very safe, which is nice. This is great to use with kids or folks that you're not quite trusting on the oh, rotary. I can squeeze it. You're kidding. <laughs> it's pretty but, safe. Yeah, it's a sponge with a, yeah. a piece of metal way down there. There is a razor in there, but you really have to work very hard to, to I don't think you can still even cut yourself. No, it's you meant really to do it. with fabric. So um, what I learned from Ebony Love, she's got a great die cutting video tutorial and a DVD. She encourages to mark it um, with just some Sharpie markers, so like metallic ones. And this way I know how big of a strip I need to cut so I can fan fold it on there. Oh, because your piece of fabric has to be bigger than the perimeter so that when it's yeah. cut, it's cut perfect. Yeah. And that's the blessing of using a die is you can put a lot of layers and get the exact same piece over and over again, right? You can do up to six layers. That was going to be my safely. next question. <laughs> six layers is what AccuQuilt recommends of fabric and Let's so do you <laughs> I don't think it'll work quite as well. So this way it fits through and you get accurate. And we're all about you know their their system's all about accuracy and so right. that's gonna help you. And so you just you do lose a little bit, but you know what little waste you get makes up for the accuracy that you get when you have all these pieces that are perfectly cut. They already take care of the dog tails for all your triangles. Right. So it really is a pretty amazing system. Uh, I see three and a half by three inch, uh, three and three quarter by three inches. So we would need a uh, three and three quarter strip for that one. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, let's make some of those. I want to make this quilt really quick because I yes. still got to get to a trunk show tomorrow. <laughs> and you said we can put six colors at once. Uh, six layers. So that's like 12 or 20 layers because I can put four <laughs> folds of six colors. <laughs> so let's do this one first. So when you put it on, you want to fan fold it. And that's why I had those lines on there as well from Ebony Love, because so I can know that that line's there, so I can use the selvage in that end. So we can fold it over. Because you need excess fabric past Just those a lines. Bit, not even too, right up to those lines, because I've already given myself a quarter inch beyond where those um, dies are. And then I'm fan folding it lengthways. So I feed it in, it'll be perpendicular to my cutting system. Cover it up with this plastic protection. Does the diagram on top of there have to line up to anything? Oh, no, yeah. those are just lines from use. Yeah, from the rays coming okay, so up. So after that's while, why you're able to just drop that there on top. Yep. And then just feed it through. It's really easy peasy. Just slide this off. Oh, how funny. The black ones are going to be hard to see the lines <laughs> because it's black on black. And that's as little waste as you have. 
So it's pretty minimal. Are you kidding me? We should have put fusible web on that. We could have made a little frame, <laughs> postcard frame. Hey, I want to drive though. I want to drive the Jeep. Can I drive Please, it? Please, absolutely. Okay. Now I have a concern because the block, where'd it go? That block over there, I made it home on my sewing machine. And even though I am a Juki ambassador, the machine I was using that day, oh, it was a Juki, of course, but it wasn't this Juki. And you've all heard the rumor about always starting and finishing a quilt on the exact same sewing machine. And it's kind of true what we really want. And in this case, we've got to have absolute accuracy. We really want a beautiful quilt with nice points that all match up. That's why we're using the AccuQuilt system. That's why we're taking our time to press after the seams and all this kind of stuff. So here's my trick to make sure that my new work on Mel's sewing machine matches up exactly to the work up on the wall there. Watch this. So here's the trick. I brought the block, I had finished it home off of the wall, and now I've got it over here on Mel's awesome Juki little industrial machine, which I'm gonna love sewing on. But I've matched up the seam allowance that I created originally to where the needle is now, and I've looked at the way the presser foot is lined up, and I have a perfect mark on the presser foot, or I could set an edge guide on the bed of the machine so that I could then adjust it so that the machine is now calibrated to the old work I was doing. And that is the workaround between changing machines. You want to make sure your stitch length, or excuse me, your stitch width stays absolutely consistent and measuring it with a tape measure or ruler doesn't work because you've probably pressed things, things have gotten distorted. So putting the original work on the new machine is so much better way to recalibrate for the new sewing. And speaking of the new sewing, let's put this block together. What do you think? So she said start with these and it's just that interior seam. So we're just going to sew straight through there. The center of our star is done or our block is done. We're just gonna do the same border we did in the first video. I'm gonna, if you need more instructions, Mel's got it on her wonderful blog. If you like photographic, she's she photo bombing me back there again. <laughs> she's such a ham that way. I tell you what, now I'm just gonna make some half square triangles and finish up that outer border, but we won't leave you out. We'll show you how it all looks when it's done. No seam ripper. <laughs> well, we haven't pressed open the last seam. Let's get in here nice and close and see how good Mel did with her cutting because I sure I did perfect with my sewing. But my first thing I want to point out is how nice the piecing was actually with the Accu uh, quilt system. It cut way faster than the way I cut it at home with my rotary cutter and it pieced actually faster and there was actually very, very little waste. Um, I love the piecing side, uh, standard traditional piecing because it's fun, it's easy, and it's achievable by everybody if you don't have an Accu quilt. But if you're really into patchwork making and you like this concept behind the block system at Accu quilt, um, you just can't go wrong. Okay, I don't want to do this, Mel. You know what we have to still do? We now have to put your block, or excuse me, our block next to my block yes. from home. I don't want to do this, but we're going to have to do it. Let's see, does it line up? Drum roll. Yeah. Pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. Yeah. Closer than I've ever been before. Should I sew them together and call it a table runner and just be done with the project <laughs> right now? Yeah. Okay, so this is, again, once again, confirming whether you're starting on the AccuQuilt or whether you're starting by piecing, you can always go to the alternative method because we're making the same size pieces. It's just one cuts it by running it through the die cutter and the other you're cutting it and piecing it a little more traditionally style, so but they're both fabulous. They, they play really nicely together, so. Yeah, this yeah. worked out great. <laughs> Look at this. And it's now getting dark outside. The sun is setting, so it's time to go get some dinner, I think, yes. pretty quick. This is Absolutely. awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for coming by. This was super fun sewing together. Awesome. Hey, Mel, you know what you should really do? 
why don't you plug all of your awesome stuff? <laughs> Tell everybody how to find Mel Beach on the internet because that's where this video sure. will be live. My website's uh, www.melbeachquilts.com. Um, yeah, melbeachquilts.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. But you can get to all that from my website if you go to melbeachquilts.com. So I'd love to have you come by and see all the fun stuff that I'm doing, both for Michael Miller's. I do a lot of quilt challenges. I do a lot of teaching. So... Come stop by and see what I'm doing up to next. Uh, yeah, no appointment necessary. Just stop by Mel's house anytime <laughs> and she will make a quilt block with you today. Sure. Sure. <laughs>so nice cool even with like those being um made from the half square excuse me those ones are the half square triangles and this is on the rectangle with the uh, snowballs yeah rad stuff i'm starving yes <laughs>